Hello, beautiful being. What is up? It's 333 Eastern Standard Time. And my name is Jeanette, also known as Misfit Vegan. Today, I have my iPad here, which means I have lots and lots of questions for my guest. Um, I am going to be speaking to my friend, Mike Perrine, um, who is at Everyday Detox, and I don't know if he knows this, but he is one of my biggest mentors. And I wanna say this before he comes on, so I, it doesn't look like I'm kissing his ass. I hate when interviewers do that. But Mike Perrine, which I thought it was Perini, but apparently it's Perrine. I've been saying his name wrong for about 10 years. Um, he's one of my mentors because there's a lot of people in this movement, you know, the healthy, raw vegan movement that are very woo-woo and don't take this the wrong way mike but mike is not woo-woo he might be spiritual but he he speaks with like he t talks the truth okay he speaks he researches he's knowledgeable he's not just guessing when he gives answers and when he helps someone i did a consultation with him years and years ago he really helped me and i don't know if he remembers but we're going to talk about that and so many other things. So guys, we are gonna bring Mike Perrine on. He is the founder of Roots and Sky Clothing Company. He's the founder of Vitality in New York City, which is the only place that I will get a colonic, okay? Um, I'm still looking for a colonic person here in Florida, but I've only had a colonic at Vitality. I uh, highly recommend it if you're in New York City or if you're visiting New York City, you have to go. It's an incredible center with amazing people. Okay, I'm going to bring Mike on. Sorry. But guys, oh, we already have questions, I think. But do me a favor. Put your questions. You see the little icon below with the um, question mark? Put some questions in there for Mike because he's extreme. He's a wealth of information. You're going to want to definitely get your question answered and read. So let me bring Mike on finally. Ugh. Mm -hmm. I might need to adjust the camera as usual. Hey, Mike. Oh, boy. <laughs> the camera always gets fucked up when there's two people on, huh? Yes, right. it does. So thank you so much, Mike, for being here. And yeah, great, great to here. see you. Great to see you. And congratulations on the move to Florida. Thank you so much. You're Oregon, right? I am in Oregon now. I'm in Ashland, Oregon at my little funky studio here. Um, this is my little fun place. Uh, you know, it's not the big intense energy of Midtown Manhattan anymore. It's like, I'm like listening to children play in the playground and like there's mountains out there. It's just a very different vibe for me. Um, so loving it, loving so, it very much. But that's the background, it's perfect. It's so perfect. Um, we're gonna get right into it. But before we do, I just want everyone, somebody out there might not know who you are. So can you just tell everyone a little bit about yourself? And I really wanna know specifically uh, about your first colonic experience, okay? Because it's not every day uh, that, you know, you can convince a guy to get a colonic. It, it's quite difficult sometimes. Yeah, we went through a period where, because I've been, I've been a colon hydrotherapist for 21 years now, maybe 20, 22 years now. Uh, and there was a period where it was mostly like 90% women, 10% guys. And then we went like 50-50 for about five years. And now I feel like we're kind of at like at an 80, 20, but yeah, not a lot of guys jump on the colonic table. Um, so I'll give everyone the quick version cause I've done my bio and you did a great job introducing me. So I appreciate it so much. Uh, my name is Mike Perrine. I'm a colon hydrotherapist and a nutritional detox consultant. I've been doing that for uh, almost 22 years now. I was a natural food chef and worked in the natural foods industry for seven years before that. Um, so I've always had my hand in holistic health and like organic food and, and things like that. Um, and I'll tell you, there's a, there's a really weird moment where it overlapped, where I was just learning to do colonics. So I didn't have a lot of appointments or anything, uh, but I was still working as a chef. And the New York City food, health food community is like kind of small, you know, even though it's New York City, it's big, but it's small. So like I would literally see food that I made at restaurants and health food restaurants coming through the colonic tube. Oh my God. Like, this is really weird and I don't know what this means, but... It's weird. Uh, Amazing. That's, that's really trippy. That's trippy, man. Yeah. So now um, I have a studio in New York. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, um, a partner in a studio in uh, New Jersey. 
in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, and I have this studio here in Ashland, Oregon, where I live now. I haven't been back to New York since the pandemic, so over two years now. Uh, and um, I have launched an online school called Everyday Detox Academy, and it is the it is the I, it's the proudest I'm the proudest I've ever been of it's it's the greatest thing I've ever created I'm so proud of it it is it has condensed all of the knowledge of the last 27 years that I got from all of my mentors and my clinical experience and everything and uh, I put it all together in a three and a half hour program and um, if anybody is interested in that program I don't know how many are left but we did a, a limited release of uh, discount codes and it's all caps Instagram fam 100. So, um, so people can check that out if they're interested in kind of um, going deeper into the practices and principles and understanding the work a little more deeply. Because the reason I did this program too is unfortunately, one of the biggest problems is like where I mean, you saw my post on my Instagram story the other day, people are just bombarded with marketing and products and nonsense claims. And it's like, when you've been doing this as long as like, my mentor, Dr. Fred Bishy, for 60 something years and Gil Jacobs for 40 something years and me for 27 years. And you go, all this stuff is such bullshit. Like it's, it's so non-essential. So I wanted something that I could really bring people value. So I put a lot of my attention into the digital space on the school. And that's the quick version of who I am and what I do. Dude, you, you're a true New Yorker, right? You're from New York, clearly. I am from New York and I've been so nostalgic about New York lately, but I'm so glad to not be in it right now. Everything I hear, is that, I mean, I see things on Instagram, everything looks fine, but I hear people have a hard time, uh, people that are into holistic health are having a hard time just functioning there. And it's just a weird scene. Crime is up and, you know, the, the culture is just not what it was. So I can happy imagine. to be out in the mountains, yeah. I can only imagine. It wasn't the healthiest environment before the pandemic, right? You know, but there was a lot more people in a lot more amazing places. I mean... I could tell you're a New Yorker because you're like, you're like me, you talk so fast and like, um, you know, it, it never leaves you. So I'm sure you talk a lot faster than people in Oregon. Which oh my God. Like my <laughs> wife's family, they're, they're the coolest, chillest people in the world. And like, everything's at such a slower pace. So I bring my pace down when I get very quiet yeah. because I know I would kind of stand out just like doing that. So um, yeah. But yeah, we talk, they, people walk faster and talk faster in cities. And you have to do that as part of like survival there and getting through the day. Yeah, absolutely. And OK, so you've been vegan 27 years. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I love people like you because, you know, there's been so many vegans that have come in and out, especially raw vegans that have come in the movement and now like, you know, going to carnivore and going to all these different keto and whatever. And so my first question to you, Mike, and I'm gonna, by the way, everyone, I see we do have questions. I will get to your question, but I'm gonna ask mine first because I got the interview. My first question is, what is your recommendation uh, or what do you think is going on with these people that um, go raw vegan and then a lot of them get SIBO or, you know, had SIBO and now they still, you know, they, they, they just had it even worse. What would you recommend to people that are having health issues or digestive issues that want to stay raw, want to stay vegan, um, and uh, what would you say to them? What is your best advice? You know, transition is, re is, is highly underrated these days because we're living in a social media world and people see the glowing person on the other end and they see all the great food and they go, that's my life now. I was kind of like that. I went vegan in like 24 hours when I learned the things that I learned many years ago. But, um, but I did transition into more raw food over time, you know. Um, and I allowed myself, uh, I really, I was eating a very pure puritanical diet because I was on Dr. Fred Bishy's program and like, and I was trying to do everything the way I thought it was supposed to be done. And I realized I wasn't happy. I loved food. I wanted to just have more fun with food and the adventure of learning all these new things. Uh, and also the detoxification process and the, the rebalancing of the microbiome, it takes a little time to acclimate to that. So like, I tell people like a lot, like a lot. So a lot of my clients, what we'll do is we'll backtrack a little bit into like simple cooked vegan food plus raw food. Like we start the day with juices and smoothies and fruits. And then we have salads with, I'll have them do like macro bowls or like, you know, nothing, I'm not telling them to eat vegan pizza or something or like, you know, like fake meat or nothing like that. But like, 
No Oreos, guys. Yeah, not no Oreos. Not like, you know, we don't go to like breakfast cereal that happens to be vegan. Nothing like that. But like some good, nutritious, wholesome like soups and macro bowls and things like that as like 40% of their diet and do that for a while. And it slows the detox down and it allows the, mic the microbiome to acclimate a little bit. Um, and also the colonic action is a huge factor. I got into being a colonic therapist right at the peak of the raw food uh, mania when David Wolf wrote the uh, Sun Food Diet Success System. And like all of a sudden, like there's like people that are like 55 years old in New York that are like, I'm a raw food vegan now, you know, and they would they would detox so hard and they would drop down to like skin and bones and have trouble putting weight back on. And like, but and then that's when I saw the colonic work happening because I was just starting as a therapist and uh, as the channels of elimination started opening up, they didn't even have to backtrack their diet that much. They just suddenly started putting on weight and getting color in their face and feeling better and because it alleviates detoxification symptoms. And a lot of people, uh, they, they, don't, they either don't think it's going to be as intense as it is or they don't understand what the body does when we consistently eat clean and it strips itself down and rebuilds itself. A lot of men get scared uh, in that process because you lose a lot of muscle initially. You know, um, but understanding it's a process and not the end result of what you're doing, but actual process is very important. Um, and Dr. Bishi told me that he goes, a lot of people try to cure the cure. He goes, that is the cure. You enter into it, you come out on the other side. So um, and Gil Jacobs taught me that. He was like, Mike, he goes, Gil Jacobs is a, a legendary colonic guru in New York. And he was like, Mike, you know, this is 80% elimination, 20% nutrition. Like all the little phytochemicals and all that, like that's important. But if you put blueberries and, and E3 Live and spirulina into, it, into somebody that's eating pizza and burgers, like it doesn't do much for them. But if you focus on the elimination and the sweating, the pissing, the shitting, and you get all this stuff to leave the system, plus the 20% phytonutrients that are super good, then you win. Then you win. Yeah. Wow. I completely agree. I mean, we're both very big fans of Arnold Eretz. Uh, he is both of our mentors, uh, one of your mentors. And um, so now, what introduced you to, co yeah, oh, whoa. A very old copy. That's an original, huh? You know what I love about this copy? Um, it has somewhere in it, my grandmother's, uh, I don't know where she put it. She, <laughs> my, I got my grandma into Arnold Eric and Norman Walker, and she like uh, put her name and phone number in all the books, you know, like something you would do like 50 years ago in case you lose a book. I just think that's so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now um, my question to you is, I'm just so curious, uh, Mike, how did you get into colonics? Um, like, what, what was your introduction? Um, I didn't know what, so when I first got into this, and I was, in, I was detoxing hard, I was getting lots of fevers, losing, I lost 60 pounds in about four months. I didn't know about colonics. I didn't even know like a massage was a good thing, like therapeutically for detoxification. I just thought that was like some luxury thing. I thought saunas were for like Wall Street guys that were like hanging out, cutting deals after a, a gym session. Like it just, I didn't know anything. I just knew like a little bit about nutrition and I learned about veganism and pesticides and the way animals were treated. And I was like, I was 19. So I was like, right, let me go with this, you know. Um, I wish I would have known about it, but uh, years later, Oh God, how many years? Probably like seven years into it. Um, I was with someone that was having constipation issues and she was going to the bathroom like, I don't know, once every seven to 14 days. And that was like her lifelong thing. And her therapist was like, hey, go to this guy Gil and get a colonic. Um, he's a little, a little eccentric, but like, go see this guy Gil. And um, she was like, hey, Mike, will you come with me to this thing? And I was like, okay, I'll go to it. And uh, I was just talking to him and I was like, you know, Gil, you know, like, I see all you guys around here, you, you all have so much vitality. And like, I look better and felt better and my skin glowed. But I should have had like more energy and strength after seven years. And I was like, I'm thinking maybe I should eat some like, maybe I go back to eating some eggs or fish. I don't know, like, I don't have it. And he was like, nah, kid, you just need to take a big shit. Let's get you on the table next. He's like, I got a cancellation. Let's do it. And I was like, <laughs> All right, well, you know, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, I didn't feel anything on the first few treatments. I didn't, I got it intellectually, but I didn't feel anything. But I kept going and doing it and listening to Gil, who was quite, quite um, an amazing person. And, and uh, he's quite a personality. And he had a very big effect on my life. And then once I started wreck, like, like getting up off the table and my eyesight would sharpen up or like, and I was like, oh, wait a second, I'm getting this elimination thing and how the body functions when it's clogged with waste. Um, 
and yeah, seeing people recover from uh, amazing things and amazing lifestyle transformations, people in the waiting room and um, not getting paid very much as a natural food chef. I'd been working for like seven years on like I ideals, you know, like on like what the way I thought the world should work. Uh, but in health food restaurants in the 90s, there's not a lot of money. I was just like, I, I realized that working, I was going to become a nutritionist, but then I realized that like working with people doing the colonic work, you that's really where you fun, you can see fundamentally how their diet and lifestyle is affecting their internal chemistry through the treatment tube. And I was like, I need to try this work. I didn't know it was going to become a 22 year career, but it did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's what you don't eat that heals you, right? That's what you were saying, basically 80% elimination, 20% what you eat. And I don't think that, I mean, how many people know this? It's just such a hidden secret still, even though the raw food movement is much bigger now, right? And obviously plant-based is like exploding. But um, question, how many times a day should we be pooping? And can you tell people about the sesame seed test that you invented? Did you invent yeah. that? I think so. I, I might have, maybe guilt. So I, I mean, I've never heard calling of it. So calling it what it is and structuring it that way, I think I kind of invented that, but somebody probably gave me the idea. Uh, I probably Gil gave me the idea. Um, but um, sorry, what was the first question? Oh, uh, how many times, how many times should we go? You want to have a 12 to 28 hour transit time window. So it doesn't matter how many times, as long as what's coming out is from 12 to 28 hours. 12 hours is on the aggressive side, but look, sometimes people, especially with open systems, they eat, uh, meaning open body systems, you know, uh, you eat some watermelon in the summer, or in the morning, and sometimes you see it at night, like it's a quick transit, right? But when we're eating um, normal food, fats, protein, or cooked food, uh, you want it to leave the system within, basically within 24 hours. If it's a little longer, no need to panic. But once we get into days and days, uh, even if it's healthy food, that food's not only accumulating weight, but it's decomposing and letting off waste gases, right? Uh, and if we're eating like animal food or processed food, we're letting off highly poisonous waste gases. So um, the body's designed for quick transit. So it doesn't matter how many days. I know people will say, oh, you have to go three days for, once for every meal or whatever. It actually doesn't matter. Some people have big bowel movements, you know? Like my son said this morning, Dad, that big poop, big poop, you know? <laughs> sometimes people have big poops um, and sometimes people have smaller poops, but as long as the transit is correct, it's, it's all good. The sesame seed test is where you take a meal that should move through the body in that 24 hour window. So I do um, raw salad, some steamed vegetables and maybe some avocado or something like that. And you take like one or two big handfuls of white sesame seeds and eat them. And you don't have any sesame seeds leading up to that and you don't have any after that meal. And then you look in the toilet because you never chew every sesame seed and you wait and see when you start to see them and for how long you see them. And when I do this with people, a lot of people will see it the next day. Hope that it's always a good thing. Um, sometimes people see them four days later and then they see them come out for four days. So like there's this stickiness and slowness to everything and that lets us know what's up. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. So guys, that's a simple, easy thing you can do. And so now... Um, let me ask some questions because I see we have a lot. Okay. The first question is, um, what are your thoughts on the angle, angle water system, gravity fed colonic? It's the only kind I can find. Um, okay. So it's called angel of water, I believe. Oh, angel. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, if it's the one that I'm thinking of, I, I don't, if let me put it this way. If you're getting a colonic, you shouldn't be alone. There should be a therapist working on you. I'm a big advocate of gravity colonics. Uh, we, this is actually now, we've changed this whole thing. This is like a specialty system that we actually build these systems for people in their homes and their businesses. We do trainings. So um, of course I love the, this system. I represent this system. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's no um, other methods that can be valuable. Obviously there's a lot of skilled therapists that use other methods. Uh, but when I believe the angel of water is the one where your feet go up on the thing and then there's a tube that goes in your backside and there's nobody in the room and you're just having water put in you and you're blowing things out all along the side. Just do enemas at home. Don't pay anybody for that. 
you'll do much better just doing enemas at home. There's no reason to ever pay for that. It's just, it's just that it's just like a an advanced bidet. Like it's just, it, it, there's nothing magical about that. Yeah, I mean, from somebody who's I've had over twenty colonics, and um, I definitely uh, feel there should be a therapist in the room, uh, like a trained, trusted therapist, colon hydrotherapist, because it's not just. I mean, they're massaging you. They're there's a lot going on there, you know? And okay, so question, how many colonics should a healthy person get? So somebody that is eating a healthy, high raw vegan diet, who has no health issues, should they still get colonics? And how many are like the most colonics that you would recommend to somebody? Well, when making recommendations, we always base it off the last treatment. So if somebody's eating really healthy and they're eliminating every day, but they have that backed up transit time where they're eliminating food from four days before every day, right? Then we see that in the treatment and, and they want to come more often to start strengthening the bowel. Um, so remember that person I told you uh, that I was, that I went to my first colonic with, she now goes to the bathroom two, three times a day. And she was going once every week to once every two weeks. And that was from the repetition of colonics plus juicing and changing up some diet stuff, you know? Um, and also squatting, getting in a squatting position, not sitting on a toilet like a pedestrian, but squatting like a real natural human is important. But we always base it off the last treatment. Now, there's people uh, that I see more than my family in the colonic world. I see them one to two times a week for life. And that's because New York City is a vanity city and colonics make your skin clear and your belly flat. And they don't do everything perfect with diet. And, you know, uh, and they just choose to do that. And that's fine because eliminating waste like that uh, can be very elevating to the chemistry. Um, and then there's people that have goals in mind and they're trying to, to reverse disease states and change their chemistry. And then there'll be a very specific way that we approach that. But, th but there's also people that come in, they eliminate well, they get the colonic and they go, it's always the colonic they never thought they needed. And they go, oh yeah, I hadn't been in here for months, but I just thought, oh, maybe I'll just see it. Maybe it's time. And they go, I feel so much better. And I go, okay, feel into your body. You know what's going on. If things feel off or you don't feel right or you have you know, then you come in, you don't have to like overthink it. You know, you don't have to fix what's not broken. So it's very individual. It's very individual. I have clients all the time and they're like, I want to book a package of three. I've never had a colonic. And I'm like, what, what is, why? Just come in for one. We'll, we'll see what's going on with your body. And then we'll, we'll figure it out based on like real data. Do you think it's possible to, I mean, obviously there's a lot of controversy with colonics and the microbiome and, um, you know, probiotics. Do you think it's possible to damage your microbiome by having too many colonics? Does it like completely get rid of all the good bacteria? What are your thoughts and experience on that? No, I don't. It actually, and there, I have studies uh, that show that it improves the, uh, the microbiome because uh, the microbiome exists in um, a high transit system. It doesn't exist. It, the, a healthy microbiome doesn't exist in stagnation. That's when you get a pathogenic microbiome. And a lot of the bacterial colonies, like almost all of them, they live in the feces, but we, we let those go every day. We're like, nobody stresses out from taking, you know, dumps every day, right? Uh, but yeah. they live in the mucosal membrane. So, um, you know, whatever bacteria is in the waste itself is leaving shortly anyway, right? Because that it's in the, it's in the, the waste itself. Um, but if you look at people that have chronic yeast issues or parasites, it's very challenging just with water, just with colonics to eliminate those, right? So it's always done with something from the top, diet changes or, um, or different antimicrobials or antifungals or, or something like that, plus a colonic. But just doing a colonic would never get rid of a parasite. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way because these microscopic parasites or beneficial bacteria, everything, ex it exists in that ecosystem and to completely eliminate it is very challenging. Yeah, so no, it doesn't, it doesn't negatively affect the microbiome. It improves it, honestly. Thank you. There's so much controversy with that. Do you recommend probiotics for people that get colonics or just in general? By the way, drinking water, right? Even, even people that rinse their mouth with Listerine like an absolute killer, right? That doesn't eliminate the bacteria from the mouth. Just like drinking water from the top, you never get all the bacteria out of your mouth. Your mouth is gonna be loaded with bacteria from the moment we're born to the moment we die. Even if we're doing gross things like Listerine, you know? Uh, but fresh, clean water, it's never gonna do that. Wow, yeah, I mean, there's so much misinformation out there because anybody can write anything they want on the internet now. So it's a very, it's an interesting time to be it in. Is. 
and it's very quick. It's viral. Like the, the, the information is viral. People will message me and they'll say something like, uh, you know, they'll just say something very assumptive. Like it's like, it's a true thing. Like the whole thing with, we, we don't have to get into this topic, but the, the, uh, the whole kidney filtration thing is very popular these days. And people would be like, Hey, you know, my kidneys don't work. And I'm like, well, what happened? What hospital are you in? Are you under like you're on dialysis? And they're like, Oh no, I read this thing in a Facebook group, but I'm just like, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay, but I'm sorry. You brought, sorry. It, up. brought oh. it up. So, Oh, sorry. But oh, probiotics. No, I don't recommend probiotics after colonics. Just continue to just some raw juice, eat fermented vegetables, you know, in your life. That's the most potent probiotic, you know, but no, you don't need to, re you don't need to replenish them because there's no major loss after a colonic. It's all myth. That's all myth. Somebody just made that up. There's no studies where people are comparing the biomes of people that have had colonics versus it just doesn't exist. <laughs> but there are studies that show that bowel cleansing uh, and, and colonics actually improve it. And I have those. If you're ever interested, I'll shoot them over to you. Wow. Yeah. Um, definitely interested. I'm colonics changed and saved my life for sure. And people that follow me, they know. And if you're there, if you're watching from Mike's page, just so you know, I went raw vegan and I felt like I was dying. I was detoxing, you know, from eating McDonald's. I just went raw vegan in one day. And after a month I was dying and I couldn't breathe. I was coughing. I had mucus coming out of every orifice. I got a colonic within an hour, I was fine. But I was suffering for a whole month before that. So if you're suffering, if you're dealing with any health issues, I mean, the first uh, advice that we would give is to go get a colonic. And Mike, I've always wanted to ask you this. Is it true that before 1910, every doctor's office had a colonic machine in the office? Uh, I know that they, they did offer it in hospitals. And, and of course, in the old world, like the old German grandmothers used to do colonics for fevers immediately and like, you know, uh, or do enemas rather. Uh, I, I've seen, I don't know if every doctor's office had it, but I have some books, I have some books over there that show um, really antiquated old like colonic devices that they were using in the 20s. And yeah, yeah, they understood that bowel cleansing would help reduce fevers and, and would reverse a lot of issues. Yeah. I don't know what happened to that knowledge. You know, I mean, I guess pharmaceuticals and virus hunting and like those things really just sort of took over, you know. Yeah. So now, Mike, this is not on my list. But since you brought up the kidneys, I really want to know what is your view on vitamin P? What is your view on urine therapy? I'm just curious. Um, I think it can be homeopathic, honestly. Uh, it's great for skin, by the way. Gil used to have a thing where uh, people would be in the waiting room and he'd be, Gil, my cousin has a rash on it. Tell him to piss on it. And then he'd like walk <laughs> out of the room. Um, they actually put horse urea into, um, into a lot of beauty products. So um, it, it can be very pH balancing for skin, um, but it can be homeopathic because urine is the is a reflection of what's going on in the blood. So it can actually help stop a detox process. I don't practice urine therapy. I already do enough weird stuff. I'm a colonic therapist. I don't need to be rubbing piss on my face and drinking it. But um, too much of it, though, uh, can put a little bit of stress on the kidneys. Like you have to be careful recycling toxicity that your body's trying to release. But in a small dose, I know people use it homeopathically, meaning you're taking in a small dose of what's going on in your chemistry and it could slow down or stop a detox process. So in, in, in that way, I know uh, people have had a lot of success using it. I'm not like, a practitioner of it. Like a true vaccine is supposed to be. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say that word. I don't even know if- this Let's see, Let's see if the video makes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, how did, next question, how did you get your, okay, so amid, amid mindful, how did you get your digestive system working properly when it's sluggish? Oh, so how do you get it? Like, as far as elimination, um, obviously a colonic, I would, you know, we would highly recommend a gravity method colonic, but, but after that, what would you recommend, Mike? squatting even when you don't have to go to the bathroom squat just like read look at your phone we used to tell people to read books you can squat right on the toilet the little bench is cute but it, that's like training wheels that's like like you know the real the real human monkeys we squat right so um squatting on the toilet aligning the hips opening up the hips uh, you know getting everything in alignment works really well um and also starting the day with uh 16 ounces of water to start and then um uh, 16 to 32 ounces of raw juice or somewhere in between that, especially a little carrot, beet, uh, and then some greens in there. Like don't, don't just do green juices. Cucumber, celery, kale is great. Good for the blood. I alkalizing, like always drink that stuff, but, um, to stimulate the bowels, 
beets, carrots, those work really well. Um, and Mix spinach. those together, Mike? What's that? Mixing it together, beets, carrots. Okay. Carrot, beet, spinach is Norman Walker, the godfather of colon cleansing. He's a little bit of an eccentric old timer from the early days, he's passed away. But um, uh, his magic bowel moving formula was uh, carrot, beet, spinach. Carrot, yeah. beet, spinach, there you go. Look at that. Um, okay, so I have a question. I wanna talk to you about mucoid plaque. It's also a controversial topic in the... Yeah, I'm gonna get a picture for us. <laughs> it's a controversial topic uh, because, you know, it's, I swear, it's like 50% of the people out there don't believe it and 50% do. And I want to know, have you seen it? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah. So at? what we're looking at here is we're looking at psyllium husk and bentonite clay that has absorbed some waste from the intestinal wall. But I have a video on, um, I have a bunch, it exists in, in three different places on my YouTube channel. I, I think the YouTube channel is just Everyday Detox on YouTube. Um, and the, the name of the video is So You Think Colonics Are Nonsense. And uh, Dr. Hiromi Shinya, who wrote a number of books, but um, he wrote uh, a bunch of books, he wrote a bunch of uh, medical manuals for doing colonoscopies and things like that. But then he wrote a bunch of books just for uh, the public that are interested in uh, enzymes and the microbiome. He wrote one on, uh, he wrote one on uh, microbes, the microbe factor, the enzyme factor. And he invented the colonoscope. And that's the instrument they use to look up your backside. And uh, before he invented that, just to remove a polyp or to do an inspection, they would cut the abdomen open. It was a major surgery. Like they didn't know, how, you know, they didn't have any other way of doing it. And he was the first person to remove cancer from the bowel uh, with the colonoscopy device because um, it's real interesting. They have a number of, they have cameras and lights on the device and they have a little snare where they could uh, cauterize and remove cancer. They have a little water hose where they shoot parasites off the wall. You can see them chasing worms up people's bodies and trying to lasso them and pull them out. Um, I but his, his colonoscopy footage made it onto YouTube and he shows the relationship. And in my videos uh, that, I, that are on my channel, I show the colonoscopy footage. He shows the relationship between different diets and disease and colon characteristics. And there's, now remember on a colonoscopy, they drank, they took the most powerful shit they're ever gonna take in their life drinking those mineral salts. Like nobody loves, everyone always complains. I don't wanna drink the stuff, you know, cause it blows you out. So what we're looking at is them on their best day. And there's plaque beyond. There's caked shit and plaque and webs of mucus and all over different intestines. So that exists. Before that, before that, you know, I and this is why you know you, you gave me a very nice introduction and you said that I approach things very non-woo woo or something like that. And that's because I wanted, uh, I wanted uh, validation that I was doing, um, that I was doing real work when I when I first started, and I understood these concepts from the cleansing literature which look is a little goofy. I mean, we looked at Arnold Errett's book, like, you know, like this is just compare, like, you know, the average person looks at that, the mucusless diet healing system with that maniac on the front, like, it's just crazy. You know, like, it's just like, who's, who's taking this seriously? But I saw the truth in it. And I saw the, the living, the living truth of it by working on people. But I was like, I, is this real though? Every, is there some people coming in saying that, you know, their doctor is saying that there, there's no, um, there's nothing going on inside and, and it should, you know, the body takes care of itself and we don't accumulate waste. I can't find a picture of it, but everything used to be like sketches, you know, and it would show like this diseased colon with like mucoid plaque, but it was a pencil drawing. And I was like, can this be real? And then his footage came out and I was like, there it is. There's a Western medical evidence that when we overeat, when we drink alcohol, when we dehydrate, when we overeat and consume animal foods and refine carbohydrates, that it sticks all over the inside of the intestine, decomposes and pollutes the system. That's it right there. I don't, it's not like, you know, we're not into some weird woo woo shit anymore. Like, like that's it. No, there's no more weird holistic alternative territory. He invented the colonoscope and he's showing us like it's technology and medicine coming together. Like it's just, that was it for me. Yeah, I can tell you're a truth seeker. That's why I trust you. That's why I have gone to you before. And I have to, guys, go to Mike's YouTube channel, Everyday Detox. Check out his videos. He has an amazing podcast by the same name, Everyday Detox. And um, I can just tell that you have, you have done the research because you want to know the truth. 
You know, it's just like so hidden. The truth about everything is hidden in this day and age. And so um, I heard Alan Goldhammer. I love him. I, I'm, I really do love him. He's the head of True North uh, Fasting Center. I saw a lecture by him the other day when he was saying that there's no such thing as mucoid plaque. You know, they do water fasts and they don't do colonics. They do a colonic like once every hundred people, like if you can't eliminate within a week. And I just, you know, he's a doctor, right? So like people believe doctors more when in my opinion, I believe doctors way less than other people because they don't have as much time to study the truth as people like, you know, like you. So um, it's very confusing, you know, and, uh, I think it makes sense that if we if we have if we're eating unnatural things, unnatural things are going to happen in our body. Is that what's is that what's going on, right? Why people believe that putting a double fudge sundae in here is going to come out here just in one all in one shot? Like it's everybody thinks that this right here is. By the way, Roots and Sky Clothing Company just dropped the new durian teas. Um, but people okay. think that what goes on in here is like a big magic box, and they could just put anything in, and it all comes out on the other side. It's like Come on, if we look at any autopsy footage or any just anatomy book or like that stuff doesn't all come through properly. And eventually will things get pushed through and do our bodies do a better job when we're 16 years old versus when we're 70 years old? Of course they do, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that it's accumulation that causes, you know, aging and disease, accumulation of waste, the primary cause of it. Um, and yeah, I, there was another fasting guy, the guy in Costa Rica who he was on a podcast he was a podcast guest after I was a podcast guest and the, and the host said, Oh, you know, my, my, my uh, last guest, Mike Green was saying that, you know, something about colonics or retained waste. And he was saying, you know, I'm sure that guy's very well intentioned, but that's just nonsense. And I'm just like thinking like, and not even getting personally offended, but just like, come on, 20, 22 years of experience doing this, Dr. Hiromi Shinya, all the mentors that came before me, like, I don't, I, we're very compartmentalized in our thinking and I'm sure I have my blocks too, but you see that with a lot of people. Uh, they just think of things in a very strange way that don't make sense, even though they're very um, intellectually gifted and they, they have a lot of education behind them. They just can't see through certain things. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's a shame. But OK, next question. Somebody wanted to know uh, they have a lot of bloating, a lot of gas and bloating, and they want to know your opinion on activated charcoal. Do you recommend it? What's your opinion on this? And if you, do you use it in your practice? Uh, yeah, definitely. People can use it. It's part of the Vitality Broom Cleanse. So for a lot of people that might want to know a little bit more, uh, there's a download through the link in my bio. It's uh, called the Vitality Broom Cleanse. And I developed it for people to prepare for colonics, but it's really preparing for life. Now, the supplements in it, charcoal, certain enzymes, um, there is a probiotic supplement in that because these are for people that are just kind of like trying to open things up. Um, uh, those are optional. But we do use activated charcoal and it can reduce gas. Um, it can be beneficial if you're experiencing a little food poisoning or some yuckiness in the gut from detoxing. Uh, but yeah, I think it's great. I, I really love a coconut charcoal from a company called Shazandu. But honestly, they're all good. A lot of them are good. They do have some weird charcoal tablets at the pharmacy. They compact with white sugar. Um, so if you're a purist and you don't want any of that, just get the ch coconut charcoal from Shazandu. Uh, and then, so like, how how would you recommend people use charcoal? Like, what is the most amount that you would recommend it's safe to use? Yeah, actually, I don't know what the threshold is, but uh, interestingly enough, you know, my wife works in emergency medicine, so she would sometimes see my recommendations, and she's like, "Honey, that's like a lot. Like, we don't even use that much in a hospital for poisoning. Like, so charcoal is actually very effective, and when you put it in water, you see how black it gets. So, um." you can take a, a tablespoon a couple of times a day on the maximum side, like you don't need that much, but take it away from food and supplements and medicine. That's how powerful it is. And they, it's interesting, they passed the, I, I don't know if this is true, but a client told me they passed the law in New York that outlawed, you know, goth ice cream and goth bagels and all this stuff. And uh, their idea was like, they don't, they, they thought it was some type of like suppression of holistic health or something. They were like, it's so stupid. And I was like, thinking, I was like, I wonder why they would do that. And I was like, oh, I bet you I know why, because it is a very reactive substance and it will, it could very likely just be a numbers game. Eventually someone's going to go eat one of those black bagels or something and their medication's not going to work, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So I thought about it, maybe that's what's going on there. Um, 
And also you want to keep it away from food. I, I remember um, one of the juice companies in New York was like putting a whole bunch of, they were putting it into juice and stuff like that. And I was like, this, this binds up every mineral in this thing. And like, like, what's the point? Like just, you know, take a charcoal capsule or something separately. So always with water on an empty stomach is what I'm trying to say. That's the best way to use charcoal. It was one of the juice companies I was working for. Mm. So <laughs> I try not to, I, you know, I, what I did on my Instagram story the other day it was very out of character for me. I don't like criticizing other companies and, and practitioners and things like that. So I didn't want to say the name, but yeah, it made no sense, you know? Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm waiting for, so I worked for Organic Avenue and Juice Press. I'm waiting for the Organic Avenue Netflix um, thing to come out because there was so much going on in there. I was inside of all that. My, yeah, friend, I, my friend Peter, who you know, was inside of all that. He got burned hard by that company. And he's got, he, he'll be, he'll be the, the feature of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So now somebody wants to know about your opinion on enemas. Um, so like, this is also split because I know, especially like Arnold Eric followers, I have a lot of friends that recommend they do enemas every day. Do you think that's healthy or necessary? Or what, what are your thoughts on enemas? Enemas every day, if you're in the middle of a juice fast or you're just starting out or you're really ill and you're trying to change your chemistry, maybe. Um, I would have to work on the person to really know or like have their health history. But just to do that, like I know one of the big Eric practitioners does like daily lemon juice enemas and like, it's just a lot. Like I wonder what's going on with the psychology there. Like I don't do anywhere near as many colonics as I used to do. Um, like the cobbler's kids have no shoes over here. Like I wish I could do more clients. I'm super busy in my life. But in the beginning, I did a whole lot of them. A, because suddenly I was able to work on myself. And at the time, colonics were only like $65. But that was a ton of money in, in, in 2001, you know, for me. Uh, so I was... Um, so I was just trying to like get as much work as I could on myself, you know. Uh, but um, I think we need to feel into our bodies to know what's going on. You know, I don't, I mean, you could use them for vanity reasons, but like that being an essential practice, like daily enemas, like to me, there's something else going on there psychologically. I just don't think that it's, it's like that. If you're eliminating, you're right in the right transit window. If you get bloated or something doesn't feel right, or you get like the sniffles or like congestion or, and you want to open up your channels, do it, get a colonic, do an enema. But if you're just doing the daily after decades, like, come on, get a hobby. Like, you know, like do something else, like go to the gym, like do something, you know, <laughs> get a uh, girlfriend, get a boyfriend, like what's going on? <laughs> no comment on that one. Because yeah, I don't think it's how I think if you're eliminating, if you're eating so healthy, what do you think is like a reason that somebody could be constipated if they're eating a raw vegan or high raw vegan diet? If they're new to it, it's because they they need to because their, their bowel is getting uh, overwhelmed with endogenous waste that's trying to come out. So, um, uh, you know, I, and I've even had this experience where people will have it where they go to the bathroom all the time, they switch to raw veganism. A, the bulk isn't there. Now there's more water containing enzyme rich foods that are less bulky if they're not overeating. And this is why transition is good. So the bulk isn't there and the digestive system is um, balanced to, uh, stimulation from what the the pressure of the food creates so if somebody's been eating breads and pastas and meat and like their, their body's used to that stimulation of that um if they're eating food that now is more water containing and it's less bulky they, they might need to uh they, they might need to let their bowel catch up to that uh but they also might be having a lot of sticky waste enter the system from deep in the tissue and that could be difficult to pass and that's why we do colonics for people like that in the beginning um, also, there's emotional reasons. There's people with uh, ballooning and, and, and um, spastic colons and enlarged colons. Like, so there's people that do have quite the warehouse in the gut that, that holds on to a lot of food. But there's a lot of emotional reasons as well that people have a hard time relaxing and going to the bathroom. A lot of women, we, we found so many women uh, were, were taught to be shameful about moving their bowels or farting and then the boyfriend comes over and they don't shit for the whole weekend until they go back to their apartment and like this was repeated through life and they develop a lot of constipation issues from that um and guys too to a degree but but women especially so um yeah so it could be a lot of different reasons yeah. and squatting they gotta squat people gotta stop sitting you gotta squat you know i never thought about the bulk thing as far as like the raw vegan diet goes. That's so interesting. So now what is your like, what do you think is the healthiest bulk food for somebody? Like 
would they go for the nuts and seeds or would they go for some healthy cooked food? And what would, what do you think is the healthiest bulk food? The transition is health is cooked food. It's steamed beets and cauliflower and baked sweet potatoes and maybe whole grains or something depending, you know, those are going to be the healthiest bulky foods to transition. Um, but eventually your body, if you're consistent, you squat, you, you know, you're consistently eating clean, you're not cheating. Eventually your body will catch up where I, you know, I could drink juice and I go to the bathroom. You know, I don't need bulky food for that, but my body's used to just the gentle stimulation of, of live food coming in and it goes, Oh, time to go. You know, it's not waiting for like some accumulation. Like most people are constantly accumulating and expanding the tissue. Um, that, that will go in reverse at some point. Um, and I think bananas, or a great food, you know, to stimulate the bowels. Um, but eventually you want to get to a place where raw juice stimulates your bowels, where a glass of water in the morning can stimulate your bowels. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So now uh, I'm trying to get to some questions that people ask me because like we only have like 10 minutes left, which is crazy. Um, what was, ooh, yeah. Well, you've been talking about this, but people want to know what is... Okay, so people ask, what is your transition food? What was your transition food going from pizza and beer to what you eat now, Mike? At first, I went very hardcore into simple, unseasoned food. But once I went to see doctor, and that didn't work for me, like, psychologically at first, because I didn't... Because, A, when you come off of, like, McDonald's and pizza and great Italian food from Staten Island and beer and cigarettes, it's all very stimulating, like, to the chemistry. It makes us feel good, and then we feel horrible after we eat it, right? But it makes us feel good while we eat it. Um, so, like, going into, like, I remember, like, cooking brown rice with no salt and dumping a can of chickpeas on top of it and thinking, like, that was going to be my meal. Like, no seasoning, no onions, garlic, no herbs. Like, I didn't know any anything, right? So I was like, okay, this is what people eat. And, like, it was just not doing it for me, like, psychologically. So, um, uh so I'm sorry, what was the, what is the, what is the key transition foods? Is that what you asked me? Yeah. People want to know, like, what did you use oh. to transition from an unhealthy diet to where you are now, what you eat now? So at first it was super plain. And then uh, I realized like, and Dr. Bishy had me set up on like, you always juice or eat fruit first thing in the morning and start with water. And then you always eat salad is like 50% of your meal. And now we kind of up that to 60 to 80%, but that was his intermediate plan. And I was like, okay, so I was eating all these raw vegetables and fruits in the morning. And, um, but then some, and, and some mornings, if I were a little more hungry, I'd have nuts and seeds, like raw nuts and seeds after a meal of fruits, or I would have a bowl of oatmeal or millet. And then I really was fortunate living in New York where I would go to Angelica Kitchen and get macro bowls and a tempeh Reuben. And I ate lots of wheat because gluten-free was only for people that were really gluten intolerant. So, you know, like everything was whole wheat and I would eat some whole wheat pasta sometimes. Uh, I would eat tofu and tempeh. And uh, yeah, and I just did that. I made sure my diet was like 50 to 60% raw food. Didn't know raw food was a concept yet. It was just following Dr. Bishu's program. And, um, and then I started simplifying it once I really learned about raw foods and colonics and elimination. And then cooked food became like baked sweet potatoes with like steamed broccoli drizzled with a little raw olive oil at the end and Celtic sea salt and like, so the quality of ingredients went up and the, compl the complexity of uh, recipes went down. And I also eliminated some things. So I, st in the beginning, I used to use things like balsamic vinegar and like things that aren't gonna kill anybody, but from uh, a health food nerd, raw food perspective, you know, there's little issues with some of these things. So I went for a more live vinegar with uh, no sulfites in it. You know, you kind of upgrade the ingredients a little bit here and there. And I felt better and I did better. And uh, it was good though, but it was good to give myself a couple of years of time to have fun with food, to enjoy the food, to explore new ingredients, to eat food that was gonna make a 19, 20, 21 year old guy feel good and not just like try to live on like bananas and spinach, you know, like it was like, I felt good about myself and I still lost weight. My skin still shined. My bowels started moving more. Um, my teeth got whiter at the time, uh, you know, like my eyesight sharpened up, like so every, the, the cleansing happens whenever we upgrade. So we're always looking to upgrade and move and move and move. So that's sort of what I did. A lot of macro bowls, tofu, tempeh, beans. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you, okay, I'll ask a question here. Um, is nutritional yeast healthy for, in general, for a clean gut? Um, what are your thoughts on nutritional yeast? It's a, it's a non-food and it's super weird, but like if it's in something, I'll eat it sometimes. You know, I don't take spoonfuls of it and put it on food as much because I think it's weird. It's a dead yeast. 
Um, a lot of the vitamins come from nutritional fortification. So nutritional yeast doesn't actually have a ton of uh, vitamins in it. But, you know, the cheesy, the cheesy flavor is kind of good. Like nutritional yeast smells and tastes pretty good. I don't think it's detrimental. The yeast is not active. The yeast is not going to create a yeast condition in anybody's gut. It's completely dead. Um, it's not an active yeast. So, um, yeah, it's just like a weird thing. I don't know. Like I give it a thumbs. I give it a thumbs up, but I don't give it a thumbs up with enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, I don't really eat it that much. But um, I've had it. I've had it in the past. I've gone through jars of it in the early days. Like it's just it's a neutral thing. Yeah. Are there any, so you're a realist, I feel, right? And so you're not like a purist, you know, where like you only, you know, eat, you eat perfect. I don't think you eat like a perfect raw vegan diet, right? Like where you're just like eating all fruit or just juicing all the time. You eat like some cooked food, I'm guessing. What is your, what is your diet? Let me use that. Now I do. I added it back in a number of years ago. I was a raw foodist for seven years. Um, okay. I, uh. And what I started, I two things. One to myself <clears throat> is a weird thing for someone that's into raw food. I go through phases with avocados, but I don't love them. And I uh, eating nuts and seeds every day in like large quantities or or moderate quantities. It, it's they're not really a natural food, and it it never feels good if I go too heavy on them. I can and I eat a lot of nuts and seeds, but like at a certain point, it like after seven years, you know, it felt kind of yucky. So looking for concentrated proteins and calories, they were feeling a little gross. And I noticed in a lot of the colonics I was doing, people were having a lot of digestive upset from eating a lot of those uh, uh, raw plant fats, not the vegetables and the fruits so much, but a lot of the raw plant fats and proteins, like the nuts and seeds basically, and also eating them from like gourmet vegan restaurants in New York. So we started backtracking some people into like steamed broccoli and sweet potatoes. And all of a sudden the gas went down, they much more satisfied, the digestion got really easy. And I was like, I'm gonna try this myself. And I hadn't had cooked food for a while, I did it very slow. Uh, I didn't start eating flour products or tofu or beans or like nothing, no grains. But I was like, let me eat some sweet potato. Let me steam some broccoli tonight and see if I eat, you know, do I get congested? Does it give me digestive upset? It's been a long time. None of that felt really good, felt great. So I kept it in and I slowly increased it. I used to do it once a month and now I do it uh, probably a couple times a week. So I do eat many raw days of the week still. And I realized that um, the, the mindset was really broken in regards to the value of raw food because people would uh, you know, eat a pint of macadamia nut ice cream or something like that, but they wouldn't touch a piece of steamed asparagus. And I was like, oh, the steamed asparagus is by far so much better for the body. Like, this is so silly. And, when, and even Dr. Bishy says this, if you eat steamed vegetables and you're eating it in, a, in, a, in, a, in the macro, a diet of primarily raw enzyme rich food, but it, particularly in that meal, if you know, 70, 80, 90% of your meal is raw salad, uh, your body doesn't really know the difference. A piece of steamed broccoli is devoid in enzymes and a kale chip, even though it's 116 degrees or whatever, it's a dead food. It's a leaf. You're eating like leaves, dry leaves off the floor. You know what I mean? Like uh, it's, it's, there's no vitality to it. So your body has to resurrect anything that's been cooked, but it's not such a big deal. If you're eating a meal of like super cooked, rich, like Indian food, bubbling pots of beans and cooked rice and everything cooked, 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 if you eat something like that, your body's got to dump a ton of enzyme potential into it. Your energy is going to go down. It's not going to move through the system as well. You steam a broccoli or eating a sweet potato and your body has to compensate a little bit with its own enzyme potential. It's, nobody's ever going to get to the end of their life and be like, oh man, I wish I didn't eat those sweet potatoes. So that's, <laughs> like, it's just, right. that's not the thing. That's not, that's not with the rough, that's not the thing that, you know, is going on. Um, so anyway, that's my thought process on it. And that's what I do now. Yeah. Yeah. So you answered my next question, which was like, do you, you know, the whole enzyme thing with the raw food? And yeah, I completely agree. I was that way for many years. Raw is law. David Wolf, Cook Food is Poison. You know, he ends, he has a book. What is it? Nature's First Law. Love that. After every, every chapter ends with Cook Food is Poison. And, and God knows what he's eating now. Um, so, okay. Last question. By the oh, way, yeah. I want to throw this in because I just posted an Instagram uh, a clip on my Instagram story and in my posts of Dr. Fred Bishy and I talking about it. Not all cooking is the same. I saw that, so, yeah. So, like, you know, we, like when we cook fats, we, we damage them. And that's, re use, building the body out of damaged fats is not a good thing. Steaming broccoli with water, cooking with water or, or dry roasting in an oven, that's, that's going to be much uh, less toxic 
if we're looking at the microscience of toxicity, right? Like the average American steams broccoli and eats sweet potatoes. It's cleansing, right? But, you know, since we nerd out on this stuff, uh, cooking oil, though, it, you know, resulting in glycation, like that's not a good thing. That causes systemic inflammation throughout the body. That can even uh, cause the C word if done repetitively. So using high inflammatory fats and deep frying and you ever see like the Food Network where oil is smoking in a pan and like, like that is a killer right there that causes free radical damage. Like that's an absolute killer, uh, really bad for the liver. Um, but, you know, drizzling some raw oil on steamed asparagus, like carrots, steamed carrots, like not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Okay. My last question, Mike, and by the way, thank you so much for the rapid fire <laughs> answers. Like you cannot stump Mike. He's, this is like been doing this for almost 30 years now and uh, very, very knowledgeable. I would highly recommend if anybody watching this um, is going through some health issues and frustrated with, you know, seeing doctors, not knowing what's wrong and um, just dealing with, some like issues and you don't know why I recommend doing a consultation with Mike. Are you still doing consultations, Mike? I do them by special request only. So you'll never see them on my schedule, but people will message me and I'll agree to do them. Um, I, I recommend that before even getting a consultation with me, do the, do the program. It's called eliminating the toxic load. It's at everydaydetoxacademy.com. Um, it, it, it really sets the foundational work. But if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, you could DM me as well. You won't see it on my schedule though. Um, and I do, I do almost all of them that, that I get a request for. So definitely get them yeah. on my schedule. Definitely make it happen. So if you're, um, so go to Mike's link in his bio, or if you're watching on YouTube, click the link below. I will leave all of his links below. My last question for you, Mike. Um, yes, Mike is the best, Diane said. Yes, he is. Oh, Diana, great to see you. One of my, my dearest clients. He's taking the academy class, yes. Um, so my last question, Mike, is what are some things that you wish you knew at the beginning of your health journey that you know now? Oh, wow, that's, that's a really great question. Oh, <laughs> um, I wish I would have known more about uh, the importance of body work and what it meant. You know, like I just kind of ate a certain way and went through it and went all natural and took the chemicals out of my, uh, you know, my, my bathroom cabinet and stuff like that. I, I did all the right things, but um, I wish I would have known the value of these things. Like, you know, but that, that's how it works. You know, we learn them as we go. I mean, I, when I, I think sometimes about, I've been very nostalgic about New York City, uh, about the New York that I grew up in though, right? And I think back and I go, God, if I would have known about, like, God, I think about like where I used to live. And I'm like, if I would have known about cold immersion and stuff like and, and saunas like I wish I would have been doing that like right from the start I would have done so much more of that in my life if I would have known about it, if I learned about it you know uh, years later five six seven years later um yeah it, we're really living in a great time with social media because you can curate your experience and like we have these brilliant people like Wim Hof and we have all these athletic trainers that are just basically and I try to to also do this where you just give so much of it up to people to help them. You know, they just create so much free content for people to learn and grow from. We really don't have any excuse now. You know, like I get it like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you didn't come across the right book or meet the right person, you might not know that these things existed, you know, but now it's like a lot of it, like it's common knowledge that, that these practices are there. I wish I would have known the value of colonics a little bit earlier, probably would have helped me through some intense detox things, but it gives me, I guess it gave me the, I guess it gave, it gives me the experience now to explain this to people because I've done both ways, you know? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, and then you're one of those people that you give away so much free content. Guys, if you go, if you're not subscribed, go subscribe to Mike's uh, Instagram and his YouTube because it's just like so much value. I can't even like tell you. It's one of the most valuable accounts that I follow. Seriously, Mike, thank you for everything you do, all your Q and A's, all, you know, you put so much thought and love into everything you do and, and you're clearly, were born to do this. You were clearly born to do what you're doing. And I love that. I love knowing people that are doing what they're supposed to do, helping people get healthy. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, let's do this again one day because you're awesome. And I just, like, you blew my mind multiple times. I was taking notes. Um, but I'm going to rewatch this just to watch it and get and absorb everything that you said. And um, again, thank you for being here. Thank you guys for watching. Wow, we have 40 something people. That's cool. Wow, that's a nice amount.
Thank you guys so much for staying until the end. We appreciate it. And Mike, have a beautiful day. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.